Hello guys, this is Lina Slimayenki 2 Hotel. Today I'm gonna talk about this little black box. It's really made in Japan. It's written on it, it's duplexer. I think this is diplexer. What the heck is going on? What have I bought and why? Stay tuned and you'll learn more. My backyard full of snow. And here is my antennas. This is my six element Yagi for two meter band. Here is my vertical R8 for HF. And both these antennas are connected to the ICOM IC705. In the shack, the coax cable from the two meter Yagi antenna comes into this port of the device. And the cable from HF antenna comes into HF 50 max port of the device. It's written on the device that this is a duplexer, but I call it a diplexer. We'll talk about that in a moment. What's the difference and what's the right name for this device should be. What's the difference between duplexer and diplexer and why it's so important? Well, you may say, as long as the device does a job, it's not important what you call it, you know, it does a job and it's okay. But, well, you know, I think it's important because when I buy a bicycle, I don't call it a tricycle and vice versa. So here is my take on how I understand what the duplexer and diplexer is and what's the difference. The best way to illustrate what a duplexer is, I think it's an amateur radio repeater. So you can imagine a basic repeater or barebone repeater as two FM radios. One is a receiving radio, the other is transmitting radio. Receiving radio receives a signal on one frequency of the same band on 145 MHz, let's say, and it transmits the, the same received signal through the transmitter side of the repeater, or this FM radio, let's say, just with a much higher power on a little bit different frequency of the same band, let's say 145 plus 600 kilohertz. As soon as the receiving radio receives a signal, you transmit from your walkie-talkie, it switches on the transmitter, and transmitter starts simultaneously retransmit your the same signal through the same or could be different but through the same antenna in order to enable this principle work the most important thing is a duplexer the duplexer separates the receiving channel and the transmitting channel of the same band and it's done by the means of two very narrow banded band pass filters not low pass, not high pass, but band pass filters installed in a duplexer, avoiding effect that the very powerful comparatively transmitter signal just drowns out your received signal of, of the of the receiving part of the repeater. That's what duplexer does. So now, if it were a duplexer it would actually work a lot like a simple antenna switch, like this one, you know, good old mechanical antenna switch. Antenna A, antenna B, and the common transceiver here. You can connect, you know, HF antenna on A, VHF, UHF antenna on B, and you switch manually each time, you know, you switch uh, you <laughs> the bands. But, uh, well, Maybe it will work, but it's just a matter of time when you would misbehave and you transmit your HF signal into your VHF antenna. And, uh, well, what would happen? I don't know. Uh, the diplexer would do exactly the same as a mechanical antenna switch, just by the means of two filters installed in there. It's also two filters as in a duplexer, but these are totally different filters. So the duplexers, in difference to duplexers, work on totally different bands. 
so and uh, normally it's very far away bands like HF band and VHF UHF band so and the purpose of a diplexer in our case is to separate two antennas from each other and enabling these two different antennas uh, to connect to one transceiver like ICOM IC705 in this case and this device by Takamatsu Ham Olive Club is designed specifically uh, for this ICOM IC705 transceiver. It works with any transceiver, but the whole design, the idea was, you know, devoted for ICOM IC705, which is very cute. Now radio is not connected to the Dupe 50 and the Dupe 50 is hooked up to my Nano VNA F. So the Nano VNA F is calibrated at this place both both ports so including including the leading coax cables so the port s11 generates the whole spectrum of hf signals these hf signals you know come come through this port enter the dupe 50 and then exit the dupe 50 after the filter one or the other and come into the s21 port we don't need SWR. Okay, so now we have a nice clean picture of what's going on in, in, in the filter and what kind of filter is it. And we see very nice low pass filter. So here's the HF and to the HF spectrum like 30 megahertz. The loss is only minus 0 0.15 dB negligible loss 57 megahertz we still have very acceptable loss minus 0 0.36 db approaching 100 megahertz we see very very strong attenuation so it means that it's a low pass filter and it works so it lets all the signals from 1 megahertz to 60 megahertz pass through the filter with very very little uh, attenuation and the signal of uh, VHF UHF spectrum is not allowed to come through this uh, filter because the, there's a huge attenuation. Next experiment I've changed the sweeping range on nano VNA from 60 megahertz to 550 megahertz then of course I recalibrated the nano VNA including the cables at the plane of the end of these cables the, the, the one and the other and then as to one port is connected to the uhf vhf output of the diplexer in this case uh, we see very nice picture of the uhf vhf filter it's a typical very nice high pass filter because uh, all the high frequencies are passed through the filter and the lower frequencies are blocked by the filter. So we see the cursor sitting on the left skirt of the filter and its uh, frequency is around 60 megahertz, so the end of the HF band and it, the attenuation is minus 43 dB. And if we climb up the skirt uh, and we come somewhere to the ham radio band around 143 148 range of that so this two meter band fully minus 0 0.25 db only so it basically the same as it was on hf and if we quickly go to the 70 sams band like uh, something like 430 430 megahertz all right, so now 432 megahertz, uh, we see minus 0 0.8 dB. And if we come to 442, let's say we see a, a little bit less, so minus 0 0.73 dB. A bit uh, bigger loss than on 2 meters, but it's still less than 1 decibel. We have to bear in mind that these are not laboratory grade measurements. And your measurements, of course, might vary from my measurements. By the way, the Japanese manual warns you that this is not a weatherproof box 
or or the cover so if you i'm gonna install it somewhere outdoorsy it's recommended in the manual to put it into a hermetic plastic box or or, or protected plastic box or something all right let's take a look what do we have here so we have hf port here vhf uhf port here we see the label here indicating who is the author of this nice work it's takamatsu olive ham club Juliet hotel five yankee victor charlie and so nice components nice soldering so how does this diplexer really work let's say the hf signal on 20 meter band comes to the entry port here it bumps into a wall of filters so here's low pass filter for hf here is high pass filter for vhf and uhf as this is an hf signal on the entry it is streamed through this low pass filter hf low pass filter because low pass filter lets all the frequencies less than 100 megahertz let's say uh, to go freely through the filter uh, into this port if we have two meter signal let's say this signal is streamed to go this way from entry port to the vhf uhf port uh, through the high pass filter high pass filter only allows signals higher than 120 megahertz to go through the filter if it's hf signal there's no way for it to be connected somehow you know accidentally to the vhf antenna and the opposite if, if this is a vhf uhf signal there's no way to connect your transceiver to hf antenna uh, somehow accidentally because uh, this signal won't be allowed to go through this filter your two meter signal uh, will be connected automatically to the UHF or VHF antenna uh, to this port. So that's how it works, and it works pretty nicely. Lima Yankee 2 Hotel, Lima Yankee 2 Hotel, London Yankee 2 Hotel, London Yankee 2 Hotel. Roger, Italy, Zulu 2, Bravo, Victor, Charlie, Lima, Yankee 2, Hotel, you're a 5x9, 59, I'm running 10 watts, 10 watts only, 73. Okay, Roger, thank you, 73, ciao, 20, 20, Perfect, it works. So, the diplexer makes no difference into my signal strength, maybe I'm losing something like 0 0.3 dB, but, uh, well, it's, it's okay, it's okay. This device, which is good news, is not really QRP, even if it's designed uh, specifically for the ICOM IC705 radio, uh, but it's uh, written, it's set in the user manual, uh, which you can translate uh, by the means of Google Translator from Japanese into English, uh, that it could work easily up to 50 watts of power output. Another uh, thing to mention is if you sometimes you know would like uh, to use your antenna tuner like this nice z-match tuner which i'm going to talk about in my one of my next other videos please check uh, please check uh, my channel or best of all please subscribe to my channel then you will know when uh, the new video is coming out so if you if you're gonna use the antenna tuner or an antenna or is or a power amplifier uh, with this um, device so you you should use you should connect a device uh, after the diplexer uh, so if the diplexer is connected connected like this so then you should connect let's say this antenna tuner to the hf port first and then uh, you connect it uh, to the to the transceiver of course and then your hf antenna is connected to the antenna tuner 
and your VHF antenna connected uh, straight to the diplexer's uh, income port, uh, which is designed for, for two meter and centimeters um, antennas. So that's, that's how it works. All right, summing up guys. This is a very nice and useful little device from Japan, designed and produced by Takamatsu Olive Ham Club with the call sign Juliet Hotel 5 Yankee Victor Charlie. So thank you very much guys for this nice work. It's not so easy actually to obtain this device because there is a queue. Uh, you have to, you know, get on, on the waiting list. And then if you're, you're lucky, you get, you know, after some time when the guys in Japan, you know, finish making the whole lot, uh, the new lot of, of, of these devices, and then you get it. I'm very pleased, you know, to test it, to try it and to talk about it. So uh, the question about duplexer and diplexer, well, I think our friends in Japan will think again. And probably on the next, uh, so to say, batch of these devices, it's going to be written duplexer. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a duplexer. Maybe I don't understand or I understand incorrectly what the duplexer is. So if so, could be, it could be. Uh, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section. Tell what you think about this whole philosophical debate here. Any debates are very much welcome on my channel. Thanks for watching. Please, again, please leave your comments in the comment section. Please subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing. And for today, that's it. 73. See you in my next videos. This is Linas, Lima Yankee 2 Hotel. Cheerio!